Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today is World Breast Cancer Awareness Day and a number of us restorers are doing the Paint It Pink Challenge whereby we are picking a model and we are going to paint it pink to raise awareness of breast cancer. Today I am using this number 5 Airport Coach. This is going to be my bare bones vehicle that I'm going to customize to look like a bus out of an Australian movie called Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which came out in 1994. Here's a picture of the bus in question that featured in the movie. And here's a close up of it. You can see it's not quite the same. One of the main issues I'm going to have here is that the rear axle on the Priscilla bus has two wheels, like this, a twin axle. So I'm going to have to modify the chassis and the body on this vehicle, which is a first for me. And I've got to source some new wheels to make that second axle. And it just so happens that I have this 1985 Chinese built plastic school bus and coincidentally the wheels are exactly the same so I'm going to be taking these wheels off and using them to make up that double axle. Here's a plan of action that I've drawn out. There's a number of things I've got to make, a few 3D printed parts. Obviously I've got to paint it pink. There's a big shoe on the back there. Uh, in, if you watch the movie there's some guy sits up in there, see that? And they're traveling interstate in Australia to uh, do a cabaret act. Now I downloaded this stiletto shoe for the roof off of Thingiverse and it was a little bit big so I resized it down to the size that was appropriate for the vehicle. I printed it out and it turned out not too bad. It's just a little bit too big for my project at the moment so I'm going to reduce the size of it. Now it's more the size I'm looking for. This should look good on the roof of the coach just like the one in the movie. Now as for the bull bar and the sign above the cabin I just made some rough measurements of the model and came up with this design of my own. This bull bar for example is just a number of cylindrical elements joined together and I think it will look quite good and this is the sign above the cabin which is basically just a rectangle with a recess in it. So after I printed these bits out, here's a test fit, just to see what they're going to look like. The little woman sitting on the roof I was going to include, but I decided not to in the end, because I felt it would make the model look too fussy. I mean, I probably will include it in the box for anyone that's interested if they buy this on eBay. It's going to be listed on eBay later today, after this video, and anyone who's up for it can bid. The proceeds of the sale of the item on eBay are going to the Peter McCallum Cancer Hospital, which is in Melbourne, Australia. So a worthy cause there. First up, I've got to remove the base. Now this model is somewhat unusual to me, as it's got three rivets on the base. And uh, I remove all those three, and then I still can't get the base off. And what do you know, there's an extra one there, so this base is held with four rivets, no less. Which is unprecedented in my Matchbox experience. So I'm using this little ball grinder on my Dremel here to remove the end of that stubborn little rivet on the front there. And hopefully, once I get that grill off, this model will come apart. That's a tiny little metal part that actually holds the top section of the body to the bottom section of the body and then it holds both parts to the base so quite ingenious really as you can see here there's some plastic molded rear lights that go into some holes on the back of the lower body there so it's very well designed and sturdy and will not fall apart even if you smash it with a hammer as some kids probably tried to do in their day. So now it's separated, I can remove this windscreen assembly. And I'm now looking at the base and trying to wonder how can I make another axle? 
and put another set of wheels on this model. So looking at this, I'm thinking I'm going to have to take these wheels off this little school bus. That's going to be the first thing. So I'll do that now. I'm a little bit rough with this because this is basically being used for spare parts. So it doesn't matter if I damage it somewhat. Now these are the exact same wheels, which I was quite amazed to find. Here's all the parts separated in the box there, so they don't go missing. Now I'm just looking here, I've got to cut out another wheel arch here at the back to make room for that second rear wheel. So initially I just draw it freehand with a indelible marker pen there, and I'm really, I mean I try my best, but I think there's got to be a better way. And what I might do is I might just strip all the paint off first and then have another go at marking it more accurately, probably with a metal scriber or something similar. So I'm using this poly stripper paint stripper in a fast food container. I'm holding the model with some hemostats so I don't get my fingers coated in paint stripper. And I'm just applying it, spreading it over liberally with this, paint, this paintbrush and leaving it to loosen the paint and then I shall be scraping it off with the pink toothbrush. As you've probably seen already if you've seen some of my other videos. Now I'm going to wash all the loosened paint off as per normal with some warm water and scrub it with this little toothbrush here. Make a bit of a mess which is unavoidable due to the nature of the thing. Uh, I clean up after myself and this is what I'm left with. Give it a quick rub over with a wire brush just to scuff it up a little bit and, uh, and prepare the surface for receiving the primer that I'm going to use. Right, once again I'm back here thinking about this rear archway that I've got to cut. So I'm just marking it there roughly. And again I'm using this indelible marker pen. And it's all a little bit iffy that it's not as accurate as I would like so I come up with another idea I put some paper tape on the original wheel arch and I run over it with a pencil here so sort of like a brass rubbing that you might have done when you were at school now I've got a perfect template if I cut this in half I can use one half for this side and the other half for the other side I've just got to line it up with the original top of the wheel arch there. I've just got to line it up with the top of the original wheel arch and press it on. So that's one side and that's the other. Now I'm using this pointy file here just to mark the casting with a few little key markers that I, I'm basically going to join the dots up after I've done this. So I'm just making some little scuff marks there on that pencil line. And when it's finished, I can peel that paper off and just freehand it very carefully, try and get a nice constant arc there and something to grind away at there quite accurately so I don't have to think about it. I'm using this little ball grinder again, the one that I used to remove the hidden rivet at the beginning there. And this thing just eats through this metal like it's a hot knife through butter. I'm quite impressed with the little thing. I guess this metal is very soft, but it, it, it makes short work of it. And it looks a little bit rough at the moment, but I'm going to clean it up with some small files and I think it's going to look pretty good. Here we go, I'm just uh, running this little cylindrical grindstone in there just to speed things up a little bit, get me close to where I want to be. And then I'm going to finish it off with some hand tools and try and make it as neat as possible. Here I'm using a half round file, a small hobby file, one side is flat, 
the other is a semicircle and I'm using the semicircular side here simultaneously I am scraping it and rotating it to try and make a nice smooth arc uh, I'm just checking that there's enough room for both wheels here and they're not going to touch when they're in position and I think I've got pretty close to where I want to be so I do the other side then I realize I've got to modify the base as well because the wheel cannot go in there because this piece of metal is in the way so I've got to cut these little pieces of metal off here and once again the Dremel comes into its own and I'm using a rotary cutting disc here and I'm trying to be as careful as possible because there's no return from this if you make a big stuff up this is the only base I've got so I've got to be very careful I don't wreck it so I managed to get away with that relatively unscathed I now just have to try and neaten it up with some hand files well before I do that I do a test fit and now I can see exactly where I've got to work so I just use these little hobby files that I've got this one here is flat sided on both sides and it's great because it's it's got a rough edge on it too so it's, it's really good for cutting in those right angled corners now the Priscilla bus does not have sunroofs on it as this airport coach does therefore I've got to block them in so I can paint over the top of them so how am I going to do this I thought well I've cut out a little rectangle here of this polystyrene sheet and I'm going to glue it on there on the inside and then I'm going to fill these squares up with some modeling putty and sand it flat and hopefully you won't know that it ever had any holes in it so to glue this polystyrene sheet on I'm using this contact adhesive it's the stuff that smells like you're going to get high if you inhale it so I don't advise that you inhale it no, I'm just telling you so you know what sort of stuff it is I'm using. I'm sure you're all familiar with that potent uh, plastic glue. Alright, once that's set, I've got a nice base there in which to plonk some body filler. And I can sand away merrily all day long until I get it nice. This windscreen assembly that I'm going to reuse has these sunroofs on it molded on it well they can't be there anymore because there is no hole for them to stick out of so I'm gonna to have to cut them off and I use this exacto knife and it cuts through this plastic very very easily I must admit I was very impressed with it either the knife is really sharp or the plastic is very weak or it could be a combination of both but check this out this was a very easy thing to do and I was quite surprised pleasantly surprised in fact So that's one off. I don't know whether I'm going to keep that. It might come in handy for something. Now I've just got to do the other one. Now I'm doing again just a test fit to make sure it fits in there as it should. It's a little bit scuffed up and dull that window. I'm going to have to try and clean it I think. Anyway, before I can fill this, I decide I'm going to wear off that ridge around the sunroof there. That square ridge. And now I can apply the filler. I'm using this Humbrol Modeler's Body Filler. I've used it a few times in the past and it's a really good product and I'm, I get on really well with it. I use my finger here to spread this around I should really have just used a piece of plastic card in hindsight because the putty actually stuck to my finger and I was basically dragging it around rather than spreading it evenly so it wasn't the best option anyway I sanded it off after it dried and uh, 
you can see there's it's not perfect so I have to apply a second coat and build it up in layers so there's the second coat I've kind of dabbed it in there rather thickly and I'm going to rub it back now this model is going to be slightly different as it's uh, going to be auctioned off on eBay at the end of this video I'm going to make a diorama for it in this little plastic display case that I bought so to begin with I've put some masking tape around the outside which is what I want to preserve and keep as plastic and on the top here I'm just roughening it up because I'm going to build up a sort of a fake scenery on here and I want it to grip tightly and to make the fake scenery I'm using this pre-mixed plaster the sort of thing you might buy from a hardware shop for filling in a hole when you've punched a hole in the wall in anger if you've ever done that I haven't I know some people have but that's what it's used for for filling in little holes in walls well here I'm spreading it over with this lolly stick or spatula whatever you call it a wooden spatula and I'm basically just trying to make it smooth and all up to the edges there now before it dries I've got this sawdust that I collect from my circular saw bench in my shed and I knew it would come in handy one day so I'm trying to make a red desert effect here because if you watch the movie Priscilla coined of the desert you will see it drives around in the red desert of Australia once again before it dries I'm just running this BP tanker just gently supporting it and running the wheels over the soft plaster there and sawdust just to try and give the impression of some vehicular or truck what would you call those truck tracks tire tracks now I'm just trying to set that sawdust in there by dropping it hoping that gravity is going to force it into that plaster and it's going to stick now I set it aside to dry and it does take like 48 hours for that plaster to dry so I've got plenty of time now to concentrate on other things for example sanding this roof back now this is about the fourth time I've done this and it's reached the point where I am confident that I can undercoat it and it will look good so straight into the spray booth and using some of this light grey Tamiya undercoat I spray the model to my dismay I can still see a very slight shadow of the holes that were there so what I do is I get out the model filler again and go for a fifth time I think it might be and I'm confident now that this time it's going to be good Here's a little dent on the side I noticed. So I've just put a little bit of filler in there as well, whilst I'm about it, and uh, sanded it back. Here's another one on this side. I'm using some very, very fine, wet and dry emery paper there. And you can't feel it. But I, I did paint this, and you could see it, so I had to strip it back again. This model, I tell you what, was very challenging. I think I actually painted it with undercoat maybe half a dozen times. I had to go and buy another can. That's how bad it was. I really wanted this to be as good as I could get it. So now I've undercoated the parts, I am giving some more thought into how to mount this axle into the base. Now the originals are in these channels, you see, one at the front, one at the back. So I figure I'll just dig out as a third channel using the Dremel and the rotary cutting disc there. I marked it with a pencil, roughly where I thought it should go. And I'm mindful that I am actually weakening the model here. These uh, bits that I'm cutting into are probably braces of some description to make the base sturdy. And I'm just chopping away at them. This is my first attempt. 
I'm hoping I've got it in the right spot. But when I put this in, I notice that the tires actually touch, which is what I was trying to avoid. So I end up having to make that a little bit wider so I can roll that second axle forwards. And this is what it looks like after I've done the second cut. So I'm happy with that. For the base, I'm using this pressure pack of satin black. I get it from the $2 shop and it is the best stuff ever for bases, I think. It's not gloss, it's not matte, and it dries beautifully. Now here's another close-up of that little shoe, and I've got to paint it. It's got to be silver. I want it silver on the outside, and I want the inside to be black to make it look like a proper shoe. So to hold it whilst I'm painting it, I heat up this paper clip and I stick it through the base of the shoe because it's plastic, you see, and it melted and went straight through. And so now I've got something to hold whilst I paint it. And when, it, when I've painted it, I place it on this magnet so it dries. Now you can see the grain from the 3D printing there. Well, I give this shoe about six coats of silver paint and it ends up concealing all of that grain from the printer. Now these mag wheels, they look a bit Hot Wheels-ish. They don't really look much like bus wheels. So I've turning them from mag wheels into like standard boring coach hubs by painting the gaps in the middle there silver with the ink from the silver ink pen. And I'm hoping that these are going to look more like a coach wheel rather than a Hot Wheels fast car wheel. And I've done an extra set there in case, this is, well, that way I can just pick the best three. This is that 3D bull bar that I made. We call them bull bars over here, I don't know what you call them. Smaller ones are called rhubars. I've also made a sign for above the roof and I've had a bash at making this roof rack. Didn't really turn out too well, so I do a third one. And I, using a little bit of TLC here, I make it work. It's not exactly like the original, but it's representing the original. Um, if I hadn't have put one on the top there, you might have noticed that it didn't really look much bus like like the one in the in the video. Here's the front there, the front section of the headlights and bumper bar I've sprayed silver and I've added some chrome paint to the headlights. Now this bull bar has to be attached to the front of the model here. So I'm going to have to drill a couple of holes so that I can put those pegs that I've designed on the corners of the bull bar. I can put those pegs into the model to hold this bull bar in position. Here I'm just double checking I've center punch those in the right spot. They look pretty close to me. So I use this tiny drill that's the same diameter as those posts. And I try and go in as straight as possible without slipping, without gouging my fingers. Well, that's just start a starting. Uh, for To finish it off, I put it in the vise and drill down perfectly vertical and here we go I'm testing out that bull bar and look at that now, originally I painted it black but when I checked the photographs later on in the video I realized it should have been chrome so I at the end you'll see I chrome chromed it with the silver paint now for this rear axle that I've made or in fact both of them I've used some of this black, thick, Starbond filler super glue, and I've just put blobs of that in there to secure these wheels into position, making sure there's a gap between them so they can turn. Now this windscreen, I wanted it to look ultra special, ultra clean and ultra shiny. So I turned to my favorite method of metal polish and cotton buds. And to my dismay, it actually turned out pretty ordinary. It kind of went a little bit dull and I struggled to get a high shine on it. And the more I tried, the worse it got. 
The interior here, I didn't like the original yellow. It seemed a little bit fake for a bus, so I changed it to the grey. Here on the back, I filled in those two vents because on the original bus, those vents weren't present. And I'm also going to put a couple of signs on the back here that are common on trucks in Australia. They're, they remind people not to overtake a turning vehicle because, you know, when a truck turns left, it occupies the right lane. And a lot of people get wiped out when they're trying to overtake on the inside when the truck's turning. So here I've showed you the dull looking windscreen and I figure I'm going to make my own. I never liked that yellow. The original bus had clear windscreens, not yellow, so I figured, sorry, not the original bus. The bus in the movie had clear glass, not orange. So I thought I would use some of this styrene sheet, which is clear, 0.75 millimeters thick. And I made a template out of paper tape, stuck it on the card, cut out the card and then used that to cut out the styrene sheet. So this is the cardboard prototype that I'm experimenting with. And I'm just scoring up the edges here so I can fold it up and see if it fits into the model. Well, as you can see, it fits quite well. And if I can replicate that in the clear sheet, then it's going to look a million dollars. So I've marked around the cardboard template with a thick texture. Now I'm cutting on the inside of the texture line. That way I'm as close as possible to the original cardboard one that I just test fitted. I've just got to score the sides and the ends and fold them over. This one is going in the front. So I've made two windscreen assemblies, one for the front and one for the rear. And I'll show you how they turned out later on. Now this model, Paint It Pink Challenge for Breast Cancer Awareness Week. I'm painting it this X17. Tamiya pink straight out of the pot and I'd love to say using it out of the pot was a breeze but in actual fact I attempted this multiple times got dust on one air bubbles on another uh, runs on a third I, I must have done this I spent a whole day on this stripping it painting it stripping it painting it it was, I was desperate. I was very, I was, I was not in a good place when I was making this. <laughs> perseverance though, with perseverance, you, I got there in the end. Now the roof of the cabin and the roof of the truck and the roof of the bus in the movie, they are both white, like snow white, gloss white. So after I painted this top half of the body pink, I had to mask it off with some masking tape. Then I sprayed it with some clear, Tamiya clear varnish to seal the edges of the masking tape. And now I'm going to spray the top of the roof white with some Tamiya gloss white. And I hope that the clear spray that I put on over the masking tape has sealed the edges of the masking tape to prevent this white paint from bleeding because there's nothing worse when you, you peel off the masking tape and it looks atrocious. Anyway, before this is fully cured, it's still a little bit soft for paint, I am pulling off the masking tape. I'm being very careful, very gently, doing it slowly. I'm pulling up and away so that hopefully if there's any white paint, it's kind of cutting the edge off of it. And to my surprise, I actually have a win. It looks pretty good. I only have to touch it up in a couple of mine places with a paintbrush just there on the front of the windscreen there on the edge. I just touched that up and on the back there there's a little bit of overspray. But overall I'm happy. 
with that. <laughs> um, now I've drilled a hole in the base. Why, are, why, you ask? Well, because I've super glued with baking powder and super glue a nut on the inside of the model. I'm making a diorama for this, as you remember I said in the beginning. And here it is, and I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of it. And I'm going to secure the model to the diorama using a screw driven up from beneath. And hopefully it's going to go into that captive nut that I've glued into the base. That's going to go about there. So I'm going to have to drill a hole through this diorama. Now here I am fitting the homemade windows into the bus. I'm using some clear silicon to do that, to glue it into position. You can see I've made a hole in the roof of the model and a hole, corresponding hole in the glass section there. That is for the attachment pin that's on the shoe that will go on the roof at the end. Now that's quite a snug fit in there and it looks to all intents and purposes like it's an original part. So I'm pleased with how this is turning out. That bit there goes in the front. Now I've printed off all these decals, uh, multiples of them, because you can never have enough in case they stuff up. This one here is going to go across the, the roof on the, the destination board. I've got a... Uh, the rear stickers there, don't overtake, turning vehicle. I've got the beware kangaroos on the road ahead. And I've also got the MMM logo that's going to go on the base to brand this and make it a little bit more special. First time I've ever done that. This Priscilla sticker went on and stuck immediately. As It's annoying me, it's not exactly central. So I put another one over the top of it and it looks a little bit better than the, than the first one. Now these are those don't overtake a turning vehicle stickers. I think they are an Australian only thing. I don't know if they're in Canada or in America or even in England, but they're on every truck over here. And it's a weird looking sign, but that's what it means. Do not overtake turning vehicles. It's just a warning to cars that are following trucks. I'm marking the middle here so I can put this MMM logo on there so that this is now a branded model. Like I say it's the first time I've done that but I thought it might make it extra special for someone. And here's all the parts ready to go back together. Now initially I start off putting the seats in and I realised I made a mistake because they just fall straight out when I'm trying to put the base on. So, When I put the base on, it's held on with these three black screws. This is the first model I've done where I've drilled and tapped three rivet posts and put three screws on the base. Have a look at that. Quite neat, isn't it? Now the top just clicks straight on like this. Oh, first up, I have to engage those rear lights. And once everything's pushed together, and I've closed that gap up along the side, I glue this bumper bar in position on the front, because I have no means of replicating that rivet I drilled out. Remember the awkward one? The hidden one? And I just glue this bull bar in the front there. And second to last is the Priscilla sign. I just dab it in the super glue there. Very carefully try and get it right first time round. Stick it on the roof there. That's it. I can't move it. That's where it's going to stay. Oh, that looks quite central. And lastly, this huge silver shoe that's big enough for a human being to sit in it and when they drive through town they can promote the cabaret act that they're 
they're going to be doing. Like I say, it will, it will make sense if you watch the movie. At the moment it looks a bit weird. Why is he doing a bus with the shoe on the back? Well, watch the movie and you'll know. So this is what we started with, the American Airlines number no. 5 airport coach from Ken Motts in Arizona. Thank you, Ken. And this is what it looks like now. Totally transformed into Priscilla, the queen of the desert's bus. It's got the bull bar, the chrome bull bar, the roof rack, the sign above the cabin and the huge life-size, human-sized shoe on the back there that a human can sit in. I've even painted the details on the rear lights there for something different. I don't often do that. And I've made this little diorama for it all to sit in. So it represents a, a red desert road on the way to Broken Hill in Australia, New South Wales, I believe. There's a road sign there, a kangaroo road sign, and a discarded tyre in the dirt. Some rocks and a little bit of dried up foliage. And it comes in this nice plexiglass case. So, here it is. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm portraying it here with a backdrop of Ayers Rock. And yes, that is me. I'm really entering into the scheme of things here. Whoops. Getting a little bit indecent there. I nearly fell out there. So there we go. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. If you wish to bid on this item on eBay, here is the link right here. So jump online now. It's for a good cause. The Peter McCallum Cancer Hospital in Melbourne. This was a great initiative by all those involved and I thank you for inviting me to join in and be part of the fun. So until next time, this is Marty from Marty Smashbox Makers saying goodbye and thanks for watching. Oh my god. <coughs> Today is World Breast Awareness Day. <laughs>